And as you rush to get your taxes done, experts warn that scammers are out there waiting to get their hands on your money as always. And so joining us right now with some tips to help keep you safe is Ian Miller. He's the CEO of CMIT Solutions of Portland Central. Good morning, Ian. Good morning, how are you both? Doing well good, on good. this Monday. So uh, can you give us an idea of how many people have fallen victim to tax fraud every year? And what are the most common types of scams that people should be aware of? Well, sadly, the scammers work all through the year. But obviously, in this uh, uncertain time, with the, the delay in the filing and everything else, they have probably a good season for hunting uh, victims and uh, trying to defraud them. And uh, unfortunately, there's been $1.8 billion uh, in tax fraud that the IRS has reported uh, over the last year. Uh, and so uh, basically what they try to do is they try to reach out to victims either through fake phone calls, uh, fake emails, which are referred to as phishing attempts, which is spelled P-H-I-S-I-H-I-N-G, um, or through identity theft uh, mechanisms. And so uh, the average individual who falls victim to these scams uh, tends to be uh, uh, taken for about $1,000 per, per person. So it's a, it's a very serious issue. And people need to be careful about giving out any of their personal information uh, in any of those ways. Yeah, gosh, and I know it's it's a scary thing because no one wants to get in trouble with the IRS. So everyone is, uh, you know, trying to make sure that they're they're doing their taxes right and they're and they're getting that done. And I think it's that fear that can make exactly. people kind of susceptible. Yeah. So uh, what are some of the common misconceptions about tax fraud? I think everyone thinks like, oh, I'm I'm too smart. I'm not going to fall for that. But I, I would imagine it hits more people than you'd think. Well, it does. I mean, imagine being uh, an older person and uh, getting a phone call from someone pretending to be an IRS person saying that they have, you know, perhaps a, an unexplained refund and exciting that individual and saying, just give us your details over the phone and we'll expedite your refund or something. Um, the, the fact is, is that the IRS doesn't call people and it doesn't reach out through email. It tends to use good old fashioned mail. Uh, to contact people. And so if you are uh, contacted in any of those unusual ways, you, you've got to be especially vigilant. Uh, but one of the other misconceptions is that uh, filing uh, electronically is somehow uh, a bad thing. Uh, in fact, we would say that because uh, the IRS actually does have good technology in this regard and actually encrypts uh, any electronic filing of tax returns, it's actually one of the better ways of doing it. And uh, we would certainly encourage people to get their uh, tax returns filed sooner rather than later, simply to deny the fraudsters the time and the opportunity to come back to them and uh, 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 get at them one more time. And how can Portland residents avoid tax fraud? Are there any red flags that uh, they should be looking out for? Well, they should be really careful about um, the ways that they uh, file their, their, their taxes and just in the sense of where they do it. Um, it's, it's very uh, prevalent for people to think, you know, I'm just going to go to a coffee shop or whatever and, and send my tax return. In. And the fact is, is that uh, even though, as I said, the technology is pretty good, if you're, if you're sending it over a public Wi-Fi system, uh, that's not a good thing. Make sure you're in a secure environment. And also, um, one of the tips is to look at the websites that you may be using. Um, you, you may be aware that a website typically starts off with HTTP and then, the, and then the actual name of the website. But if there's an S on the end of that, HTTPS, then the S is a secure connection. And so you want people to always be looking, especially if they're in a public place, for that S on the beginning of a website name, because that means they are more protected. So everything I'm saying here really is valid all through the year. It's just security best practices to be careful of using public Wi-Fi, to be careful to be onto a secure website, and, and, and to be really careful of any uh, emails or calls that unexpectedly ask you to do something unnatural or urgently, because the scammers always try to create this, this sense of urgency and uh, excitement around the problem or the opportunity in order to get the uh, the people to react in the way that they want.
Yeah, always but, best practices, but even more important when uh, when all of your money and, and <laughs> Uncle Sam coming after you is on the line. So exactly, and the thing is, Ian, like those are great tips to slow down, think about it, and when you do have those red flags, like ask somebody, like what is this all about? Yeah. I'm gonna, not gonna lie, I actually fell for a scam online. It's a whole other story. Um, but I lost 80 bucks because I didn't oh, no. slow down. So these are definitely good tips. If I can fall for it, anybody can fall anybody for can. it. Anybody can. You're not alone. Don't feel bad. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs>